1,388 at Daryl K. Royal Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas for Texas's first official game, first official Southeastern Conference game. The opponent was Mississippi State. Texas jumped out to an early lead. Jaden Blue, the one-yard rushing touchdown to cap a five-play, 72-yard drive for an early 7 to nothing lead. Mississippi State with a couple of Cal Ferry field goals in the second quarter from 45 and 32 yards to make it a one-point game, not a one-score game, a one-point game. Texas with a, uh, a touchdown pass from Arch Manning to uh, Moore. Is that DJ Moore? Is that right? It, it doesn't matter. Uh, DeAndre Moore, sorry. Um, right before the half, made it 14-6 to six going into the uh, locker room. Uh, Texas... Gets a uh, a touchdown at the end of the third quarter, so that it was still fourteen to six, all the way through the third quarter. Um, Arch Manning with a touchdown run, uh, with as uh, time expired at the end of the third quarter, Texas adds another touchdown. Um, about five six minutes later, uh, Mississippi State did get a twelve yard rushing touchdown from Michael Van Buren, and then Texas with a uh, a score at the end. Of, 35-13 was the final. Hey, Dad, what did you take away from Saturday? That, you know, when, when you're not a good team, and Mississippi State is not a good team, and you go on the road to play the number one team in the nation, that's what that game should look like. You know, the score, State State was never really in the game. Even when they were down one, only down one, you were like, ah, they're just, this, this is going to get away from them eventually. But it wasn't 58 to 10. It wasn't 65 to nothing or any other of the scores. I mean, hell, that's what I predicted. I predicted 58 to 10. I thought it was going to be not only ugly, but just just a, a total massacre from start to finish. We, we talked about it being a name your score game for Texas. Yeah, yeah. So to be able to walk away with, with saying, you know what? They played okay. And the freshman quarterback, he looks all right. And defensively, they did enough for the first three quarters – to keep him in the game, do I still think Coleman Hutzler holds on to, or holds on to his job? Do I think he holds on to his job at the end of the year? No, I don't. I mean, there's just he's just got too much too much baggage at this point. But did they play better? Yes, they did. Does Van Buren give you some some hope for the future? Yes, he does. Is Johnny Daniels a pretty decent running back? Yeah, he is. They've still got big issues on both lines of scrimmage. There's just no getting around that. Mm-hmm. Offensive line, they they can't they just can't get it done. Defensive line, I mean, they just cannot get any push whatsoever. And that's going to cost them a lot. That's going to cost them wins this year. But I walked away from that game saying, you know, I walked in saying they will be really lucky if they beat UMass to go 2-10. and 10. Now I look at them and say, you know, if they play that way against A&M and Arkansas, they at least have an opportunity to be in the game and have a chance. So... I walked away with about as much hope as you can from a 22-point loss. And you're back to giving them securely a win against UMass? I would think, yeah, they, that, that's a team that can beat UMass, yes. State gets the weekend off before heading to Georgia on October 12th. More on this matchup between Mississippi State and Texas when we come back in the Pearl River Resort. Remember the numbers from game one, but I would say probably throw out. What about, What am I missing? Nothing. No, I'll send it to you later. Oh, I didn't say something that was... No, no, no it's not you. You're, it's not you're, all, all, you're on... All you're all, you're all, you just keep talking. You're good. All right, so so what it's worth, Mississippi State in the uh, the season opener had 203 yards on the ground against Eastern Kentucky. Right. What was the number in week two against uh, Arizona State? 24. 24 rushing yards. And and I keep pointing it out. I, I, it, it's worth repeating that 203 includes a 41-yard end around by Creed Whittemore. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Week three against Toledo, Mississippi State had 66 rushing yards. Mm -hmm. Last week, um, not their game against Texas, but uh, against Florida. Florida, Bulldogs were better, right? I mean, they got beat handily, but Mm -hmm. they found a little something in the running game, and then they go for 150 against Texas. What do you think is different? I think offensive lines gel. A little bit. I mean, these five guys had never played a game before together. Now now they've got five games of experience. They're getting a little bit better each week. 240 on the ground against Florida. Yeah. Daniels getting carries has helped. He's he's the best guy in that bunch. 
Um, I thought Kevon Lee ran the ball well against Florida. Now he's hurt. So, you know, it's just Daniels and Booth. They're okay. They're, they're good enough. But I, I think, you know, the offensive line, they're not great in pass protection, obviously. But when it just when it's just mush it ahead, they're they're they're, they're better. They're they're getting better each week. Okay. So I th- I think they'll be fine there. Something you brought up earlier, and you you kind of just mentioned it as like this could happen. But one that you know that's something I say all the time is that there are so many coaches that would rather lose their way than win somebody else's. You got to give Jeff Levy a ton of credit for playing the way he did on Saturday. Totally slowed down the game. Tried to protect his freshman quarterback as much as he could. Tried to play the time of possession game. That's not Jeff Lebby's style of football. He wants to go hyperspeed. But he knew that that was the best chance for his team to win. And to see a coach make that kind of adjustment and call, ga- call the game completely against their own method of, 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 of football is a tremendously good sign for Jeff Lebby's growth as a head coach and his, his ability to do things in the future. All right, Joe Moorhead would have just gone out there with a the freshman quarterback and just been like, the hell with it, we're going to run the offense the way we run the offense, and probably would have given up another two or three touchdowns, and, and Van Buren would have left that game thinking, I got no confidence because I, I can't do this. Lebby, the way he ran that, Van Buren scores to put to cut the get, the lead what, to 28-13, to 13. State's out of the game. There's no chance to win. Van Buren scores. What's the first thing he does? He runs over to a Texas fan and throws the horns down at him. And I laughed at that. And normally I would be like, "Oh, come on, you're, you're getting your, you're, you're getting your new, your new what kicked? Don't, don't." Tiny. Talk. Didn't care. Thought it was great. And I was like, "That kid's got confidence." And Lebby, he Lebby is obviously doing everything he can to help him. Thought it was a really smart move by Jeff Lebby. I know, it, I know it had to, to itch him. I know he, had, he couldn't have been happy about it because that's not how he wants to call the game. But he did it. So that, that's a great sign for me going forward. Yeah. And, I mean, did, did you say what your statement has always been? Or, or did you just allude to it? You, you said coaches would – Coaches rather, will rather lose, their, lose way their way than win somebody else's. Yeah. Um, that was not the case on Saturday for Mississippi State. What's funny about that? The opposite is true for Ole Miss. Le- Kiffin wanted to lose somebody else's way rather than win his own. In fairness, I don't think he wanted. To. Well, you know what I mean, though. That's what ended up happening. Yeah. Uh, game felt like 2014 when Dan slowed it down against Alabama. Mm-hmm. Uh, as an Ole Miss fan for 37 years, State played with a grit that Ole Miss didn't on Saturday. State. That's another thing that, and I, and I say it a lot on this show that playing hard is kind of the, the minimum level of acceptance. I'm giving you know, oh, they played hard. Well. You kind of should play hard. But well, you know as well as I do that when teams are down and they're losing games, they, there can be some, some, some give up. Yeah. This team, this team, team seems, seems to still be bought into what Jeff Levy is telling them. I actually would push back on the, the 37-year Ole Miss fan. I, I don't think that Ole Miss played a game where they didn't show toughness, where they didn't try. I, I did say earlier they looked flat, but looking flat is not the same as like mailing it in and – now, I think Kentucky was more physical than Ole Miss was on Saturday. But but this wasn't like an Ole Miss quit game or anything like that. They just didn't play well. Yeah. Period. Like, they, they just didn't play well. If Ole Miss is going to achieve what it wants to achieve this year, they are going to have to play better, and their margin for error is very small. It's what I tweeted right after the game on Saturday, and I stand by that. This is an Ole Miss team that's got a lot of talent and is capable of playing with just about anybody in America when they play their best. But if they don't play their best, then they are capable of losing to anybody in the SEC. Anybody. So, um, there you go. Anything else from um, State-Texas game? Kevin Coleman had six catches for 57 yards. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, are you surprised that you haven't seen more production from Stonka Burnside so far this year? A little bit, yeah. I knew he was raw, but I thought that they would find ways to get the ball to his hands. And they, they've given him a couple opportunities. He had one catch for negative five yards against Eastern Kentucky, and they gave him a carry, and he lost yardage against uh, Florida. 
And so maybe it's just like, look, you know, we're giving you a chance here, and you're not making a play. Now that's a tough thing to give him one play. That that I've been surprised by. I've, I've been more surprised that I haven't seen from Kelly, seen much from Kelly Akari. That's a guy I had big hopes for. Yeah. But I talked about this a good bit. This this offense when he was at Ole Miss, when he was at Oklahoma, there's always one receiver that has ridiculous stats, and the rest of, the rest of them are just kind of whatever. You know, Elijah Moore. Ontario Drummond, last year with Drake Stoops. It, there's always one guy that has 50, 60, 70, 80 catches. And then the rest of the guys have 20, 30. So and that's going to be Kevin Coleman. This year. That's going to be Kevin Coleman, it appears, yeah.